If you think about fear and hunger, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Maybe it's the unsettling tone and atmosphere, maybe the convoluted yet very fascinating lore, or maybe just the 1000 times you failed the coin flips. But in general, everything that happens into the game is supposed to make you feel hopeless, to make you feel lost, to make you feel defeated. Except for one single thing. And it is hidden behind those very little question marks you can see in the difficulty selection screen. The true secret of the dungeon is a dating simulator! And that's why today we're gonna talk about Dungeon Knights in Fear and Hunger! Allow me to start this video with a simple question. What is Dungeon Knights? How was it conceived? Why was it conceived? When? This mode was originally started as a simple April Fool's joke. On the 1st of April 2019, the developers said one phrase which completely changed everything you knew up to that point. Big news, the dating sim mode. And with it, there were also a couple of messages, showcasing a day cycle, dialogues between characters, and a particular affection screen. And that was it. Nothing else happened. For the next news, we would have to wait until the 18th of April of the same year. That's the day in which Fear and Hunger version 1.2.0 got released to the public. You may be familiar with this update for the implementation of the S endings, the hard mode exclusive endings for each character. But if we take a little step back and we examine the video released on the Fear and Hunger official channel for this update, you may notice something... Uh, bizarre. Yeah, that's the reality we live in. What started as a simple April Fool's joke has gone, quoting the developer, out of hands and became a fully available mode into the game. The way to play this mode is to name your character either schoolboy, schoolgirl or school kid, and you discover this information after finishing any ending, even just ending E. As you may know, at the time the community was much, much smaller, but anyone who found out about the new mode gave a very positive feedback. And that brings the question we're gonna answer today. What does this mode do? How does it work? What are the secrets? What are all the endings? So, let's pick our first character and let's jump right into Dungeon Knights. The first thing is a little monologue from our main character, which explains us that Fear and Hunger is not just a demonic dungeon containing some of the worst abominations ever conceived. It's also a prestigious academy. Like, imagine you can choose between Oxford, Harvard, or going to the dungeon of Fear and Hunger. Apparently, there is gonna be the Harvest Festival soon, and with it, the prom. The prom for this academy is a very important event, and those who don't attend it risk of being considered socially awkward for the rest of their time in the academy. The the main goal of this mode is to find a partner and go to the prom with them. It is really a modern version of the chivalrous battles the knights of the olden times had with dragons and other ancient deities. I don't know too much about that, I mean, between finding a partner for the prom and having to fight Garokaroth, the literal god of destruction instead of the gauntlet, I think finding a partner is gonna be way harder than that. And so we jump right into the first day of the school. Hell yeah, this mod has some exclusive soundtrack specifically made for it! You may have already heard it in my other videos, and the reason is very simple, it's fantastic! Also, I would like to precise that the way in which the characters introduce themselves to the player is different based on the character. And I gotta be honest, I love having such a small detail for a mod like Dungeon Knights, and then the miasma battles in the normal game still don't work. The academy itself is very simple. Najra is a teacher, Pocket Cat is the headmaster, and everyone else is either a student or a mascot. And after this small school lesson, behold! Gameplay! How does the gameplay work? You're freely able to go around and explore the areas, which are mostly similar to the Kingdom of Rondon you can visit in the Dream section in Mahabre, with some exceptions. First of all, as you may have noticed, there are coins on the ground. Yes, all the explorable roads are full of silver coins you can use in the shops. There is the dormitory with an old friend, of course. DON'T JUMP INTO THE TOILET! 
Reset. All the houses are now shops. You have an item shop, an equipment shop, a decoration shop. You can buy stuff to put into your dormitory. Ah, I always wanted a friend. There is even a room with the hexen, with all the skills already available and ready to be taken by using soul stones. And this part right here is what made me almost cry the first time I played it. You see, when you visit the dream section of Rondon, there are some houses to which you just don't have access to. And I don't know about you, but I felt so good seeing that it was actually used here. Let's go back for a second to the dormitory though. In here there is a bed you can use to rest and to save your progresses and to proceed to the next day. Oh, um, let me precise something. The first Termina demo got released after the release of Dungeon Knights. It is now my headcanon that Dungeon Knights is what inspired the developer to create the day cycle in Termina. And then, last but not least, there is the dungeon. You can visit different levels, very similar to the actual zones of the real dungeon. Even though some layouts are completely original. There is, for example, an unused version of the prisons which was used here. And if you go to the ancient city of Mahabre, not only we have some crazy stuff such as multiple capsules behind some iron bars, but we also have some very bizarre choices such as the, the white angel literally roaming around freely in these... Mahaber. Also remember, you can only enter into the dungeon one time per day. After you do that, not only you cannot go into the dungeon anymore, but also you cannot re-enter into the school, because I guess it's supposed to be evening. The last important detail is, in the school there is a message from the developer. In here he basically thanks everyone for the support, but I would love you to remind this. He had no time to test it. This will be so important later. The final final detail, if in the first interaction with Najva you use the three dots, you burn. Congratulations, you already died two times in Dungeon Knights, isn't that crazy? But yeah, this is the general overview of what this mode offers, but I still didn't talk about the most important part, the true core of this experience. How do we get a partner for the prom? We need to romance them! Every time you sleep, there is a particular table which shows you all the affection you have towards all the possible available characters. The goal is to reach 5 hearts before the 5th day. If you're able to do that, then on the 5th day, they will accept of going to the prom with you. One side of this game mode which intrigued me a lot is that even characters who had barely any screen time got a little more expansion on their behavior. For example, Chambara spends days looking at piece of art, as we may know from the points of Love and Torment book in the dungeon. Some other characters simply got... Uh, ah! personality. For example, did you know the developer had no idea about Nilvan personality in the base game? Perfectly fair, honestly. Another funny thing was being able to see the character dynamics created. While on one side we still have the incredible duo of Darcy and Legard constantly together, then there is stuff like the boys club with Kahara Ragnavalder and the Crow Molar. But I think it's time to enter more into the specific characters. How do we romance them? Oh, and uh, I know you already saw the table and there are no girl and moonless, but no. Moonless and, uh, thank god, the girl cannot be romanced. If you came in here to see something like that, you should probably reconsider your life choices. Without further ado, let's start with the sexiest main character. I am also gonna use Kahara as a way to explain to you the tone of the next part of the video. In case you're not familiar with Dating Simulator, the main thing you have to remember is that you need to realize what is the correct answer to give character to make them like you, or you have to find a gift for them so that they may like you. And the answers we need for Kahara start from the very first day. In particular, you have to answer wrong to all the answers that Najra gives you, and you have to pick specifically. There is no continent there for the first answer, and it's a Taya in the second question. To both of those answers, Kahara will just start laughing in the back. Because of course, to make someone like you, you have to ridicule yourself. The next step is to jump right into the dungeon, and specifically in level 2 prisons. In here you have to follow the road all the way around, until you're able to reach a room which has on the ground the dirty magazine. Oh, uh, sorry, I forgot another important mechanic. Items can also be found on the ground. I love this interaction right here. 
For me, the possibility of seeing the items on the ground creates much more immersion and god damn it, I love the dating simulator more than the normal game now. After this, you can leave the dungeon, go back to the dormitory and sleep. And let me specify something. Remember I told you the two answers you need to give? You actually don't need to do both. You can only do one because there is something in the code which is on purpose gonna prevent you from getting two hearts from those questions. The developer basically wants you to gain only one heart in this first day and that's why now as you can see we will get one heart. Uh... Do, do, do you remember when I said that the developer didn't test this? Yeah, there is in the code something that should prevent you from getting two hearts, but for some reason it doesn't work. So I, I guess that's one for the bug counter of today. But I mean, fortunately it is a positive bug, it helps us. Imagine if there was a bug which for some reason prevented you from getting access to one of the final endings. And let's jump into day two. Oh, just to precise, on the odd days of the week there is gonna be Najva as teacher, on the even days there is gonna be Pocket Cut. But anyways, you have to show the dirty magazine to Kahara, but ba 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 don't give it to him. If you do, he will stop considering you from now until the end of the prom. So, show, but don't let him have it. And that's pretty much it. You see, there are some characters which are very easy to romance. Kahara is one of those. With them, you have a lot of free time to do other stuff or just to explore the dungeons and uh, have fun. I mean, it's a game. You are supposed to have fun. And then there will be some other characters which require specific calculations to be obtained. But anyways, I also bought a little carpet to celebrate my new friendship with Kahara. Isn't it cool? Uh, what? W why is it raining in the dormitory, you're asking? Oh, that's because that's the second bug for the bug counter! Go to sleep and now we have three hearts! Day three! And it is still raining. At Najra question, you have to say, what about the moon god? This, how unexpected, will make Kahara laugh once again in the back. Now, if you talk to Kahara, he will say he hates Najra attitude and has a little prank he wants to do. And he may need your help for it. That's why you're gonna go to the dormitory, you're gonna try to wait for Kahara, and then you two are gonna sneak together into the teacher's room and are gonna put a little makeup on all Najra clothes. I guess. But that's just flavor. The most important part, at the end of everything, you have to say that yes, it was a date. And it is time to sleep for the final time. As you can see, five hearts and we are on day five. You can ask Kahara on a date. Despite the bug, I kinda like this route. I could definitely imagine Kahara being just a troublemaker in the school universe. What I'm more confused about is why Najra didn't try to, I don't know, burn everyone after he found out all his bodies with makeup. And most importantly, why is the body with makeup here the prom. Does... does Najva like it? But yeah, that's the ending of Kahara. Ragnavaldor is one of the simplest characters to maximize. All you have to do is to talk to him every single day and he will propose you a level of the dungeon to visit together. He apparently loves spending time in the dungeon. And that is literally all you have to do. There is just one little thing that I want to precise. It is not necessary and I think it's not even worth it, but from day two you can give him the cave wall fur that you can find inside of the ancient city of Mahabre. You are allowed to give it to him if he doesn't have already two hearts. Oh, and just to precise, when you're inside of the dungeon, you don't really have to fight or loot. You can just rush to the end of the dungeon and he will be very happy. You can clearly see how he already lost his mind in the dungeon. But that's literally it. I usually like the characters which mix the possibility to date them with actual gameplay of the game, you know, killing stuff and looting. So this one gets a pass. To Roman's Legard, and uh, yes, I know I am skipping Darcy and Enki for now, there is a precise reason for that. For Legard, on day one you have to ask him about his goals. After that you have to retrieve a Claymore and a Plate Mail. You can buy those from the shop using the coins inside of the dungeon or on the streets. But if you want, you can also spend day one going into the ancient city because there is actually a Claymore on the ground. You know what's the only thing that confused me? If you are gonna place a quest item for Legard, the Claymore, on the ground, why not doing the same for the plate mail. There is not a single place in this mode where you can find a plate mail on the ground. But that's when I realized. You see, from the start I was always curious that maybe certain characters would have had an advantage in dating some other specific characters. So, what is the starting equipment of Darcy? Yes. 
you have access to a guaranteed plate mail without buying it by playing as Darcy. And I mean, that's kinda appropriate, after all, you know, she's in love with Lagarde. But anyways, on day two, give Lagarde the Claymore and the plate mail. He will be so happy that he will agree to go on a date with you. And this is the last mechanic I still didn't talk about. Dates! You can choose between three different locations with three different minigames. In the covers, you have to shoot to some cave gnomes moving around. In the blood pit, you're basically gonna play what is hide and seek with all the other characters. And last but not least, in the tomb, you have to recreate the symbol of Grogoroth on the ground. This one is probably the hardest, and that's why it has three minutes for completing it. And it's also the longest, so never do this. The easiest one is hide and seek, not only because it's shorter, but also because the characters are in the same exact position every time. You can just master them and you're good to go. But anyways, completing a date is like entering into the dungeon. If you do that, that's the only thing you can do for the rest of the day. And after this date, uh, we finished with Lagarde. Uh, yeah, that, that, there is nothing else to do. He he has five hearts. That that's it. But let me give you another funny detail. In the current version, Lagarde date is bugged, and if you go into the caverns or in the tombs, even the Caro Molar will gain two hearts. And this will be important later. After this, you can just skip days or do what you want. You can even fight the guards, you can get skills from the hex, and whatever you want. Let's skip to day five, and it is finally time to go to our date with Lagarde. It is so nice to see that at least in this universe right here, Darcy was finally able to confess her love to Lagarde. Oh, and since we mentioned Darcy... Now you're gonna understand why I already did Lagarde before doing Darcy. On day one, talk to Lagarde and ask what's his goal... Wait, Frapolo, did you say Lagarde? Yeah, the first thing we have to do to date Darcy is to talk to Lagarde, ask his goals, and then on the very first day you have to get both the Claymore and the Plate Mail. If you loot all the coins on the ground in the streets, and you go to the dungeon and loot the chests, kill the opponents and loot them too, you should be able to get enough. Also, specifically, go to dungeon level 1. You know why? Because here there is another quest item we need to take. Near the Ritual Circle you can find the Withered Rose, which is gonna become important important later. On day two, you have to give Lagarde both the Claymore and the Plate Mail, and after that, you have to go on a date with him. If you did everything correctly, now it's day three, and you have to talk to Darcy. She will think you have a thing for Lagarde. You have to deny everything and say that there is someone else on your mind already. Then keep talking to her, and you will get the option to offer her the Withered Rose. Doing this will bring her heart affection to three. And you know what that means? That on day four, it is dating time! Again, I I suggest using the blood pits because it's just the easiest one. And after this, five hearts, you can go to the prom. I gotta be honest, I kinda dislike the way they characterize the Darcy in this mode. Like, in the base game, for the 90%, she thinks about Lagarde, okay. She's interested in finding Lagarde and wants to become Lagarde. But for the 10%, she's still a warrior. She has faith in Olmir. She has leadership. She's a freaking dominating soul, after all. But here, apart from the Withered Rose part, which had a potential to give her some more personal personality, unfortunately she is just once again the Lagarde fangirl. And yes, I am complaining about the characterization of a character in the dating simulator mode of fear and hunger. The next one on the list is Chambara, and yes, I know I still didn't talk about Enki, but I think you can start to understand why. On the very first day, there isn't really anything to do in the school, but you have to go to the level 4 of Mahabre, and be sure to collect the meat on the ground. It's a very special meat called the Flesh Strips, and will be important later. It's day 2 where we have to care about talking to Chambara. His affection towards us depends a lot from the consideration we have of the art piece present in school. On day 2, you have to say talk about forced edginess and he will be happy. On day three, you have to choose either the first answer or the second answer. And finally, on day four, if you have the flesh strips in your inventory, you will realize he's a little bit starving and that's why you're gonna feed him the flesh strip. Uh, uh, no, actually, sorry. You do not feed him the flesh strip, you just uh, put it on his waist and he will immediately feel much better. Huh? So he doesn't need to eat, but if he touches something, he 
automatically feels well fed. Well, like, wh what happens if he touches a human? Does a human become part of his body? Stop thinking about the lore of Garo, Garoth, Sylvia. No, this is the real stuff. What happens if Chambara touches a human? But anyways, after that, you can ask him on a date. And after the date, on day five, it is finally time to get our date with the tormented one. Chambara in here follows the one piece of characterization he always had in the dungeon. He likes art. He likes pain. He likes to combine the two. I mean, I, I guess you read the poems of Love and Torment. The guy is pretty disturbed. Another very interesting detail is that he is not able to talk. The only way in which he talks is by using signs. And the last thing I want to mention is that in one of the pieces of art he looks at, there is the skin granny. I mean, it's the picture of an old lady with three arms with an extra arm extending from the back. So, identical. And she has a grin on her face, it's literally the skin granny! Since we talked about the Tormented One, I think it's time to talk about the Endless One, Nilvan! And in this game mode, Nilvan has a passion for... cats? And unless I'm missing something, I think it comes pretty much out of nowhere. But I'm pretty sure there is gonna be like someone in the comments being like, Actually, cats represent freedom and she has the Endless Soul! It is just so simple, I don't know why you are not able to realize- Yeah, I don't care. But anyways, on day one, you have to ask her what's on her mind, and she will talk about a rainbow-colored cat. Ha! Huh. What a silly thing to think about! Remember also to go down into the mines, level 3, and find the teddy bear! This will be important later. On day 2, she will be in the streets, because she is actually looking for the rainbow-colored cat. What you have to do is give either the first or the second option, and then once again, either the first or the second option. After all of that, if you give her the teddy bear, she will immediately stop thinking about the cat. Yeah, I don't really understand why a teddy bear was able to make her stop thinking about cats, was creating a plushy cat just too much for the developer? On day 3 she doesn't care about cats anymore, and I'm very happy to hear that. But she talks about gods, you have to tell her gods have flows too, and her flow is to be too pretty. Ah, 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 my heart, sorry, sorry. And for today there is pretty much nothing else to do, you can go back to the dormitory and... Uh, Nilvan? Uh, again? Uh, wait, does that mean you are not anymore into the school? Oh, okay, there are just two Nilvan, I guess, in the world. Finally, on day four, she will be in the hallway of the dormitory. You have to talk to her and say that you actually like her. Yes, I am so sorry, Nilvan fans. You do not go on a date with Nilvan. But on day 5 you can go to the prom at least. I don't know how to explain this, but despite the cat thing coming out of nowhere, new or not, she is still a girl. And it's represented here. She enjoys uh, simple things, uh, appreciates compliments, and is able to feel love. It's a very simple human aspect uh, which reduces the gimmick side of her character and increases the dating simulator side of it. And you know, this is a dating simulator, so that's pretty good. You don't have to do some crazy gimmick of Oh my god, take my sword, take my plate mail! No. You are literally just complimenting a person and asking her out on the prom. Also, I should mention, out of bounds, there is an unused Nilvan which talks about Mr. Rainbow, the teddy bear, and here we can actually ask her to go on a date, but she wants to wait for the prom. Pocket Cat. Oh, Pocket Cat. Pocket Cat is the character that already likes you. Let me elaborate more. You don't have to do almost anything to get Pocket Cat as your partner. As I told you before, Pocket Cat talks about psychology in here, and multiple times he will ask questions to the class. All you have to do to be able to go to the prom with him is to never answer dot dot dot. If you can do that, and you also go every time in his office, uh, don't question why Legard or an Iron Maiden are here, and you keep talking to him automatically, he will be able to come with you. I guess it's supposed to be the most standard route in this game, like if you fail everything you still have a chance to get a partner. And about that, what happens if we don't find a partner for the prom? Oh... Oh no, that's even worse than dying in the dungeon, oh that's so bad, I I'm so sorry, no I'm never gonna do this again, sorry, let's continue with the video. So, if you followed up to this point, now we are staying only with Najra, Chromoler, and Enki. There is a very specific reason for which they are the three remained ones, because each one of them, in a different way, 
is bugged. Let me start with the Crow Molar, which in here is depicted as one of the most shy person of the class. What you have to do is to go on the level 1 of the dungeon and find the Pinecone Pig, because it appears the Crow Molar lost the Pinecone Pig in there. And the fact that the Crow Molar had a Pinecone Pig already puts him like in my S tier of the characters of Dungeon Knights. On day 2, you have to find him in the streets and ask, what's up Crow? This by itself will give you two hearts for his auction. The next step is to go on a date with the Legard. No, you didn't hear incorrectly. I said Legard. Yeah, for the third time we have to take the Claymore and the Plate Mail and go on a date with the Legard in the caverns or in the tombs. Why do we do this? As I explained before, if you do this, you get two hearts for the Crow Molar. Why are we doing this then? Because the only other way still present to gain affection with the Crow Molar is to go on a date with him, which gives you two hearts. We are at two. 2 plus 2 is 4. We would still be missing one heart. That's why we have to go on a date with Legard. Then on day 4, give him the Pinecone Pig and go out on a date with him. Fun fact, the Pinecone Pig does not increase the affection towards the Crow Molar, which is very weird. I think that by itself would fix the problem, because yeah, you can still reach 5 affinity with the Crow Molar, but only in a bugged way. Also, I tried to go to the caverns for a date with him, and we, we got a black screen. And I, I, I didn't check if this is because I already played this minigame before, and maybe it's not supposed to be played multiple times. So... yeah, I don't really have anything to say. Oh, actually I do! If you refuse to give him the Pinecone Pig, well... He's much scarier now, isn't it? Despite using a bug, we are still able to reach 5 hearts. What will happen with the next characters then? Eh, <sighs> Nashva, Nashva. So, he's a professor. You have to satisfy him by answering correctly. The first answer is Vinland, the second answer is Oldgard. After this, go in his office and ask where you can learn more about geography. Is that it? Psh, of course not! We have to go to the prisons and collect once again the dirty magazine. On day two, there is no Najra, but we can show the dirty magazine to Kahara, but don't let him have it, and that's pretty much it. Why are we doing this? And now it's where it becomes very convoluted. Let me explain. What is supposed to happen is that if you say what about the moon god, you are able to perform the prank to Najra, but you are able to tell Najra about this. By telling it, Najra increases the affinity a lot. The problem, you also need to give the correct answer to Najra. Like, you see the problem, right? You have to answer two times to the same question. You cannot do that. You will not get enough hearts to complete Najra. And I am not sure if I missed something. I checked in the code. I watched on speedrun.com if someone speedrun this ending. And no, no one did it. There is no way to reach five hearts with Najra. And that's why, once you go on day five, of course, he will refuse the date. Hey. What? Why the screen turned black? What? Oh, eh? Wow. I I have legitimately no words to describe this. If you talk to Najra and you don't have five hearts, so always, and you ask him to go on the prom, he will say no, but you will be teleported to the prom with the Chambara. And you get the Chambara ending. W what? <sighs> I am losing brain cells making this video, please guys, subscribe and leave a like, please, I beg you. Especially because, now we have to talk about the final, final character, Enki. On the first day, take the coins on the street, buy an explosive vial, go to dungeon level 1, break the wall, and find the ancient book. On day 2, show him the ancient book, and when he asks for it, choose what is there for me. In case you didn't realize, this is a parallelism to the actual game with the Eclipse Talisman. On day 3, you can go on a date, and after that, we lose. Yeah, I... I... have nothing else to say, we just lose. We... we have no way to reach five hearts, and you can't go to the prom with him. How the fuck did the developer forget to do this? Oh, but remember, he didn't test this. He didn't test. Nah, ah, that's fine. An ending. No, you didn't test. You at least tried the ending. There is no way you didn't. You just created the event and said, oh, that's fine, that's fine. Yeah, whatever, no. Uh, I'm not gonna care either. I'm not gonna care either. You know what's the funniest part? The event exist. 
There is a phrase for Enki at five hearts. So, you know what we are gonna do? I am gonna show you what does he say. He will simply consider it the most logical option since you two already went out on a date. And that's why, after losing my sanity trying to understand if there is effectively a way to go on a date with Enki, I think we can be satisfied with this. So, this was the comprehensive story of Dungeon Knights. But tell me, did you know about this mode? Did you play it? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. And as your main character says, I thank you once again for following me on this grand adventure. Let's do it again some other time. Maybe with less bugs? And I will see you next time.